So the first job I think for this car is to get this removed so that we can fix the slats in here that aren't moving. Unfortunately, I think we can kiss goodbye to this little silver piece here because I don't think we're gonna get, it, get that unless I can find it in the car somewhere, but I think that might be gone. Uh, no, no, oh my God. I think this might be it, you know. I've literally just found that down the bottom. That might be a stroke of luck. Oh yes. Thank God for that. Right, that just looks ever so slightly better. So that's good. We'll just leave that in there. Right, yeah, so we're gonna pull out the radio and remove this. So let's get going with that. Right, so you you move the little tabs from the blank sides. Um, I just use a blade and then you just literally just hook them in and then they just come straight out. Then you need these like radio prongs and there's two holes on either side and you effectively just push these in until they click. Now, a bit like chest compressions, you don't really know when they're in um, until you really push hard. So in this case, you think that's in, but actually, you've got to hear it click and then it like unclicks it. Um, so at the moment, this isn't quite doing it quite difficult to do it with one hand but basically you just force it in until it doesn't just slide in and out so it like clicks into place then you'll be able to just pull them out with the two here so I'll try and do that now um, with both hands so it does take some wiggling around and you do feel like these are gonna come out but if you just wiggle them around and wiggle the unit eventually it does come out and then I'll be able to, so again, I'm gonna try and do this with one hand. There we go. And then what we're looking at at the back here, if you can see is two Phillips head screwdrivers on either side. And then undo those, try not to lose them. And this will click or pull out. It's clipped in at the top here but I'll uh, try and again show you how this comes out. So those screws undone in there, this is still in place. So all you've got to do is just be careful because this is quite brittle plastic. Um, you just start pushing down on the top here on either side because there's two clips on the top. So just start pushing down there, probably doing it one, one end at a time and just keep trying to look to pull it out and eventually it just comes straight out like this you can see the two clips on the top there and then this is just the whole unit so you can see it's not attached to anything there's no wires nothing it's all bog standard simple plastic and um, and then that's obviously the inside there so we are going to get some light We are going to sort this out and try and fix these, which again appears to be a bit of a common fault with the um, the 500 that they can tend to go. And you can see as well that these aren't all moving either in sync. So we'll go and sort all of that out. So the clips have been fixed. Um, I don't know if you can quite see that, but they move. We've got that chrome bit back on. So that's all good. And that is going to slide into there. And then that effectively will just clip in. So 
like so nice and easy and then the two bolts or two screws just go in either side of there and then this literally will just slide straight back into place there's no screwing nothing that just literally clips in so there we have it all back in all working all good so that's pretty much going to be the interior done apart from cleaning there's now nothing else to do in the interior of the car again <clears throat> previous videos sort of show that these bulbs go in behind here i've checked them out there's absolutely no issues with those at all so that's good and yeah as i say we just need to do some cleaning up here this is some grease and stuff that's just appeared on here and then uh, that's pretty much the interior of the car done. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you, but we've got the new handle on. That involves taking apart the inside, but it's a 10, 15 minute job to get all of that done. The seats are out and we need to over the lovely inside of this just easier to do it with the seats out so uh, I'll get cracking on that and the air vent is now sorted so that can go back in and yeah we are slowly and surely getting there there's only one thing that we need to do got to do some work on this at some point and we need a handle on there and then that's pretty much going to be it really Okay, so we've pretty much hoovered all of the inside. Obviously we've got to do up these plastics, but that can be done um, on another day. The main thing was to get into all the nooks and, nooks and crannies, which you can't get to when the seats are in. And there was a big mud sort of patch there, so I've cleaned that up. So, um, yeah, and then pretty much the back seats, I don't really think need to be done, but I'll just double check just to make sure that they don't need to be done. And then I think we'll do that door card. Um, I probably might do that now actually, uh, get that done out of the way so we don't have to use the wet vac uh, anymore. So once again, we are going along quite nicely with this one. <laughs> nice, e this is probably the easiest one I've potentially done out of, I don't know, what's this, number 11 or 12 of them? So yeah. Um, just got to wait for the seats to dry now. So with how many bolts are there? Two at the front, uh, five bolts, five bolts on each seat and um, a couple of clips to unplug like the airbags and stuff. The seats can come out and given that it's the summer as well, it's quite nice yeah, to be able to do this and let them dry quite quickly in the sun. And this was the first go of them. They didn't really need that much going over, but I thought uh, I'd give them a shot. And then this is also the second go of them as well, because I didn't feel that the first one really... It almost seemed to stain it more than actually clean it. It was a bit weird. So anyway, it's just a bit of a difficult pattern really to keep clean because it does show up the dirt quite easily especially when you've got like 90% of the seat cleaned that other 10% does really sort of uh, stand out but we managed to do that and they've come out 
pretty nicely. So uh, yeah, they'll just go straight back in the car and then uh, on to the next job. Seats are pretty much dry and they are now installed back in. So that's good. Um, I'm still not gonna have done the plastics yet. That's all gonna be saved till the end. And when it gets a complete valet inside, then uh, then that's all good. Um, door card is on, so that's all good. And yeah, and then these don't actually really need doing to be fair, I'm not really gonna bother. So, yeah, and this has been, um, we've taken out the spare, that's never been used, so that's good. So this is all back in place. And um, yeah, it's all coming on quite nicely now. Um, don't really think there's much else to really say about it. It's just an incredibly easy sort. That's the only thing we've got to do is the door handle. Left. And need to look at these actual alloys. See if we can do something with them. Um, just, just get them looking a bit more presentable. Because they are crap. But yeah. We shall return with more on the lounge as and when I get round to it. So in regards to a few questions, well, one question I put out and then a number of answers. We're trying to guess why this would be a Cat S. The more I look at this, the more I'm thinking of the sill. And it's only because when you look at it at certain angles, like this at the moment seems fine. And then if you sort of move to the side, you can see the sort of the indent. I'm wondering where Basically, if you look underneath, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. So the actual car's intact, as in underneath. It's just, it's probably moved by about an inch. And I'm wondering, that's the case. I don't think any panels have been changed. Once this is clean, which I'm gonna do later on, I think every other panel, and all the panel gaps are pretty decent. So that's where I'm thinking that this is a cat S. I think, I don't know, it's gone over, it's gone over something and it's ever so slightly dinged it. But um, let me know what you think, if you still think it's something else or whether or not that's enough to, to uh, write the car off as a cat S. Okay, we're gonna start the cleaning process now. We're going to start with the nooks and crannies first, and then we're going to work on the exterior. All this sort of area. Work on those areas first, and then we'll start on the exterior, um, and then put the handle on. Uh, pretty much at the end. So yeah. This is very dirty, it's had that Sahara rain kind of thing again, as you can see on the top. So uh, let's start cracking on in the, um, in the June sun. These are probably the worst rims I've had to deal with not only probably for curbing but just the sheer amount of brake dust and just general just certain everything that's on these 
is absolutely insane and it's taking me forever to get them off. I've managed to do one wheel but these are on like another level. I'll show you what I've managed to do here. So I've managed to get this one back. You see how bad this is. This horrendous. Um, I'll try and sort that out a bit later on. But um, I've managed to, as you see, get that get that back with various products. So yeah, let's get started and um, let's try and get this back to looking shiny. So a number of uh, coats, shall we say, and um, a bit of a bit of excess rubbing, shall we say, on the um, on the alloy um, to get really, really deep into those crevices and stuff. We've pretty much got most of it out. So um, yeah, that that's the hardest work of the car cleaning done, and now we can crack on with cleaning. Um, the rest of the car and hopefully uh, it will look like brand new right we're into the evening now I've pretty much managed to get most of it done there's a few things that I've got to do um, and I'll just run that through with you guys um, okay so as you can see it's come up really nicely now a few people are saying about panels. I've gone through this and I cannot see any new panels. All of the panels match. There's no color differences at all. So everything's like, I say faded, but over time this the white goes a bit yellow. And there's absolutely nothing at all that I can see that's changed so I'm going down the lines of that front sill on the driver's side being the cat s has been the only reason so handle is on so both handles are on And it's all come up incredibly nicely. So, the only thing we've got left to do is sort out these alloys. I've uh, already put on some metal um, filler. So I'm gonna sand those back when that's dried off a bit. And then I'll give these a, a quick spray to match as well, which I've done before. Um, and they seem to be all right. And that's the same over on these ones as well just need sanding back a bit they're all very jagged at the moment um but other than that these panels on this 2013 is very good and i'm very happy there's a tiny few little touch-ups that we've got to do here um and i think that's it for touch-ups i've sorted out the back bumper here the spray as well got rid of the cracking there as well and the interior I've got to do but I'm not going to show you that today so that is going to be the end of today's video so we are now pretty much ready to sell this and get it going uh, the V5's come back and uh, yeah um, Think that's going to be it so don't forget the usual like subscribe comment on the video let me know what you think and um i think there'll be like one final walk around video for this when everything is done and i've done the wheels and everything like that so until next time thank you for watching and uh, more videos to come